Got a very interesting comment on the study I did here, the pre-trib rapture scriptures in the book of Romans. And uh, a King James Shield writes, If real Christians would never take the mark of the beast, then how do you explain Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 6? It's a good question. Very good question. Uh, you see, the big argument is that you say, you know, well, what if a Christian goes into the time of Jacob's trouble? What if they take the mark? Because Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 4 say that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11 says, if any man takes the mark, he goes to hell. So how does that work? And the pious way that the post-tribbers will answer this is they'll say, well, I don't believe that a truly saved Christian would ever take the mark. No truly saved person would take the mark. Well, let's look about that in Hebrews chapter 6. You go there in your Bible, it says, verse 1, Hebrews 6, verse 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. Now look at this, verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. They have the Holy Ghost. Verse 5, And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Look at verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Now, people say, well, that's just, that's for today. People that sin, you know, and things like this, you know, and, and everything. And we'll look at another passage here in Hebrews coming up here in a minute. But they say, well, that's basically for today. And they, this book is not for today. I'll grant you there's a lot of instruction and in righteousness in the book of Hebrews. But you say, well, how do we know it's not for today? Well, in Galatians, it says there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ. Why would you write a book to Hebrews? Probably because they come back and there's a distinction then. In Revelation chapter 7, you see Jews and Gentiles being separated again. Right now, we're all one. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, they come back. The separation happens. Okay? And I don't mean that there's no Jews right now. There are. They're in Israel. You know, uh, sorry to the replacement theology Satanists out there, Satanic Catholic devil worshiping whatever is that you want to call them uh, like it or lump it but you see that's a big problem for you if you are a post river because this, this thing of uh, well you know I don't believe somebody who's saved in that time would take the mark what happened right there in Hebrews chapter 6 they fall away it's impossible for them to be renewed again to repentance it's funny too, go next in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 9. It's funny too because you get these holiness people, they'll try to use that to debunk eternal security, and yet every single one of them believes that they can get saved and resaved and resaved and resaved. But that's not what the text says. I asked one of these charismaniac dumb bunnies the one time, uh, in person, I asked him, I said, well, he, he was quoting the books in, or the verses in Hebrews, I said, okay, is it possible to get saved then after you lost your salvation? He said, oh yes, of course. So, you know, we've all sinned and things and stuff. And I said, but that's not what the text says. It says it's impossible to renew you again to repentance. It's a problem. Uh, I'm trying to think of where this one is. Um... Didn't write any notes for this thing. You know what? I think it might be... Is it in chapter 10? Yeah, chapter 10. Excuse me. Chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Um, verse 26. It says, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth... There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Now, a lot of people, again, they'll try to, you know, spiritualize this and they say, well, you see, 
for Christians, sin is not imputed to us, so therefore you can't really technically sin. And they try to mess the, the whole passage up. I think you just read it and believe it as it says, okay? And that's why you can't apply it to a Christian today. Again, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. If you don't, you're going to mess up the Bible. You are, if you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth, I'm saying this, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Now, that would exclude Paul from salvation because he obviously was sinning in Revel or, uh, Romans chapter 7. He talked about the fact of this struggle with sin that he had. The good thing that he's supposed to do, he doesn't do that. The bad things, that's what he does, you know. See? It's a problem. But now if you use this book and say, well, I believe that the book of Hebrews will be, you know, for the Hebrews. I know it's really difficult to understand, but, you know, when you say, I believe that this is going to be for the people in the time of Jacob's trouble, all of a sudden it starts to make sense. Because now you can look at it and you can go, hmm, okay. If they put Jesus Christ to an open shame, it's impossible again to renew them to repentance. What do you, how do you put, in Hebrews chapter 6, how do you put him to an open shame? By professing to be saved in the time of Jacob's trouble and yet take the mark and worship the beast. You're putting Jesus to an open shame. And you take the mark, Revelation chapter 14, anybody that takes the mark goes to hell. What are you doing? You're sinning. Willfully sinning. Right there. But again, you see people in the time of Jacob's trouble, they'll go back to the Pauline epistles where people are sealed under the day of redemption. And they'll say, see, people are sealed under the day of redemption. I can't lose my salvation. I'm eternally secure, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to go to hell. They'll take the mark and they will go to hell. Just as simple as that. So again, another, you know, thank you for bringing this point up there, um, a King James shield. I appreciate that. Another very, very good point to answer this, this heretical post-trib nonsense of, well, I don't believe that people, you know, if they go into that time, they're not going to actually take the mark. You know, no true saved person would take the mark. Two passages there in the book of Hebrews that say that people that are saved, made partakers of the Holy Ghost, you know, those who were once enlightened, you know, um, those people that are saved can and will take the mark in that time period, and they will go to hell. They will lose their salvation. It's, uh, you say, well, that's heretical. No, it's called rightly dividing the word of truth. So again, that's one of the strongest proofs how you can know that we are not going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Because we as Christians have uh, eternal security. In the time of Jacob's trouble, they don't. All right? So don't be deceived by these post-trib heretics.